It's Tuesday, September 17th. I'm Paul Joseph Watson. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Tonight, another tragedy fueled by mass murder suicide pills. Mass shootings are hyped up to sell the public on panic, but the numbers show that mass shootings are actually down. Benghazi Gate heats up when a CIA employee refuses to be gagged. And yes, we can arm terrorist. Obama signs an order so he can transfer Al Qaeda weapons. All this and more tonight on the InfoWars Nightly News. Top story tonight was Navy Yard killer on antidepressant meds. Several indications suggest that the Navy Yard killer, Aaron Alexis, may have been taking psychiatric drugs, bringing into focus once again the clear connection between antidepressants and mass shootings. The Associated Press reports that Alexis, quote, had been treated since August by the Veterans Administration for his mental problems, which included paranoia, sleep disorder and hearing voices in his head. Now, we also know that Alexis had problems with post-traumatic stress disorder, the most common treatment for which is the SSRI drug paroxetine. Now, paroxetine is listed as the number three top violence-causing drug by the Institute for Safe Medication Practices. We also know that Alexis suffered blackouts during these fits of rage that uh, have emerged in the news where he couldn't remember the incident afterwards, which again is another classic side effect of psychiatric drugs. We also know that the shooter had anger management issues. And again, SSRI drugs, including paroxetine, Prozac and Zoloft, are absolutely uh, routine prescriptions in terms of treating anger management. So whereas it's not been completely confirmed, everything suggests that he was on these meds. Now, it took nine months to confirm that James Holmes, the Batman shooter, was on Zoloft, which, of course, was the same drug that Eric Harris was on before Columbine. And that's because the mainstream media habitually fails to pursue this angle. They don't want to concentrate on SSRI drugs, mainly because the corporate news networks receive millions of dollars a year in advertising from the very pharmaceutical giants involved in producing those drugs. They don't want to buy at the hand that feeds them. But now it's coming clear that Alexis, this mass shooter, was on this medication. It's yet to be confirmed. But again, 90% of school shooters were on these drugs. Dozens of cases in massacres over the last 25 years of these shooters being on drugs. More and more Americans are taking SSRIs every year there's no real pushback against it, specifically because after every mass shooting, the media lies by omission by failing to make the clear connection between violence, mass shootings and psychiatric drugs. And that connection has emerged once again. Mass shootings fuel fear account for fraction of murders. This is a report out of Bloomberg. Mass U.S. shootings, such as the bloody rampage at the Washington Navy Yard, spur safety concerns and garner intense media attention while statistically accounting for few of the total murders reported worldwide. So in this article, which breaks down the research of James Allen Fox, a professor of criminology at Boston's Northeastern University, proves documents that there is no recent epidemic of mass shootings in the United States and that the fraction, the percentage of mass shootings in terms of murders is extremely small. Now, again, it's, it's perception over reality. The mainstream media's obsession over these incidents, again, in relation to their gun control agenda, manipulates Americans into thinking they're becoming more commonplace. Same with gun crime. Violent crime is decreasing rapidly in the United States. Gun homicides in the U.S. are down 49% since 1993, according to the Justice Department's own figures. But because the political establishment has organized this agenda to eviscerate the Second Amendment, it relies on the corporate press to provide the emotional theater necessary to elicit support from the American people for gun control, support which would be far lower if Americans were cognizant of the actual facts. Now, while on the subject of the Second Amendment, we're going to go to a report by Gigi Ernetta about Maryland's attempt to secede from the Union to escape high taxes and draconian gun laws. Here it is. 
add Maryland to the list of states that have counties in them that want to form their own state. It's the race for the 51st state. Maryland is dominated by politicians imposing lofty taxes that profit the bigger cities, leaving western Maryland to foot the bill with little in return. Much like Colorado and southeast California, western Maryland's traditional lifestyles aren't reflected in the political leadership, hence tipping the state laws to benefit the enlarged, lethargic government. I mean, we don't need a big one-size-fits-all policy here. And after decades of what I would call oppressive and abusive treatment from Annapolis, Maryland, the people in the five western counties are sick and tired. Earlier this year, InfoWars reported on counties in Colorado that were in line for secession. In those counties, there was Weld, Sedgwick, Phillips, Washington, Kit Carson, Yuma, Morgan, and Cheyenne counties. They've all expressed being a part of a new northern Colorado, mainly because of recent changes to the gun laws and the push of renewable energy standards that the rural areas could not fiscally sustain. Note that recently in Colorado, two lawmakers were ousted out because of their strict gun laws, so the people in Colorado had their voice heard. In Northern California, they're talking about creating a state called Jefferson. Inclusive of Jefferson would be the rural counties of Northern California and Southern Oregon. Exhausted from an overbearing centralized government, the counties are pushing back so they can be free from the suffocating regulations of the government, especially the direct attack on their water rights. In a couple of these states, the changes on gun laws encroached on the citizens' Second Amendment rights, and in every case, there was opposition to oppressive regulations, skewed priorities, and resource grabs that emanate from detached bureaucrats in the state capital. And here's a look at how the Congress sees it. We have a situation where this country has been driven by the Tea Party for the last number of years. When I was in school, I studied government, and I learned about the anarchists. Now, they were different than the Tea Party because they were, they were violent. But they were anarchists because they did not believe in government at any level, and they acknowledged it. The Tea Party kind of hides that. Uh, they don't say we're against government. But that's what it all amounts to. They're not. They're not uh, doing physically uh, destructive things to buildings and people. But they directly. But they are doing everything they can to throw a monkey wrench into any form of government, whether it's a local, whether it's whether it's state or federal government. That's what it's all about. And so, anything they can do to throw a monkey wrench in the wheels of government, they're happy doing that. So if you stand up for what is good for we the people against an overpaid, bloated, lethargic government that whips the people with their regulations that they don't even abide by themselves or even read, for example, Obamacare, then you're a terrible, non-violent anarchist Tea Party member. Hmm. The government needs to be on a regulations diet. The fight for the title of 51st state has created a trend, a massive wave of resistance to tyranny that could absolutely foil Agenda 21 and cut off the tentacles of this lecherous globalist machine. Help fight the tyranny. Sign up for PrisonPlanet.tv today and give your username and password to up to 10 people. I'm Gigi Arnetta with this InfoWars Nightly News Report. The Telegraph reports Aaron Alexis, Washington Navy Yard gunman, obsessed with violent video games. The Washington Navy Yard gunman Aaron Alexis played violent video games, including Call of Duty, for up to 16 hours at a time, and friends believe it could have pushed him towards becoming a mass murderer. They've got quotes from his friends in this article saying, I think games might be what pushed him that way. Now, as we talked about earlier today on The Alex Jones Show, the usual response whenever I raise this issue of video video games and mass shootings is, you know, I play violent video games. I'm not a mass murderer. Millions of people play video games worldwide. They're not all violent. But that's not the issue. The issue, the question that we're asking is, does an obsession with violent video games make it more likely for an already unstable person to cause violence, especially in connection, in addition to these SSRI drugs that we just talked about? Now, to be fair, most of the actual studies have not found a relationship between video games and actual violence generally in society. But I think it's obvious that there needs to be more research into this connection between mass shooters, already unstable people, on psychiatric drugs 
you know, Anders Breivik, Harrison Kleibold, Adam Lanza, now the Navy shooter, all obsessed with violent video games. There's been very little research into that specific link. And I don't think it's unreasonable uh, that we should study that connection in more depth. But even more importantly, as NBC News reported, quote, increasingly the Pentagon is joining forces with the video games industry to train and recruit soldiers. The US Army considers such simulators vital for recruits who've been weaned on shoot 'em up games. So just like Hollywood, the military is using these games as a recruiting tool to train killers, actual killers. So is it any surprise that, you know, when we habitually see mass shooters being obsessed with these video games, that there's also the same connection? We're not calling for banning video games. I understand that to a lot of young people, and we're even alienating a lot of our audience in uh, slamming video games and their link to violence, you know, it's a religion. But we're not saying we're going to ban them. We're not going to take away people's addiction. Uh, and we're not saying that video games aren't fun. You know, we all need a release. But 16 hours a day playing Call of Duty, I don't think that's going to be healthy for anyone. And is it any wonder that you know, childhood obesity is through the roof. It's, it's more than doubled in children, tripled in adolescence over the past 30 years. Is it any wonder that kids are growing up now with increasingly less social skills? You know, this level of, you know, obsession for video games is not healthy in a physical sense, and it's not healthy for society. I don't think anyone could argue with that. Moving on, CIA employee who refused to sign non-disclosure on Benghazi suspended. A CIA employee who refused to sign a non-disclosure agreement barring him from discussing the September 11, 2012 terrorist attack in Benghazi, Libya, has been suspended as a result and forced to hire legal counsel, according to a top House lawmaker. Of course, as was recently revealed, which we reported on, the White House is trying to keep these CIA agents quiet because they don't want them blowing the whistle on the real story behind Benghazi, which, which was obviously the secret transfer of heavy weaponry to FSA rebels and Al-Qaeda terrorists in Syria. So we're being told by the Obama administration to believe them on intelligence that proves Assad was behind chemical weapons attack in Syria, simply because, as John Kerry said, we know, while the administration simultaneously blocks CIA agents in Benghazi from telling the truth about weapons transfers to Syria by subjecting them to these uh, forced polygraph tests on a routine basis. So forgive me for actually using my brain, but why should we trust the White House on Syria when they've already been actively covering up what happened at Benghazi? Initially, of course, stupidly attempting to blame it on a YouTube video, and they've been running that cover up for over a year. Moving on, RT reports, yes, we can. Obama waives anti-terrorism provisions to arm Syrian rebels. The Obama administration waived provisions of a federal law which bans the supply of weapons and money to terrorists. The move is opening doors to supplying Syrian opposition with protection from chemical weapons. And this, of course, is being done under the Arms Export Control Act. So Obama is exploiting a tenuous loophole within this law which forbids supplying weapons to terrorists in order to supply weapons to terrorists. But don't worry, because those weapons are only going to the moderate rebels, you know, like FSA commander Abu Sakar, who likes to cut out people's hearts and eat them on camera. He's the moderate. Uh, the terrorists, the jihadists, are only a tiny minority of the opposition militants in Syria, right? Well, wrong, because as The Telegraph reported on Sunday, quote, almost half of Syrian rebel fighters are jihadists or hardline Islamists, according to a new report by London Intelligence and Defence Consultancy, IHS James. So those weapons which Obama is creating a loophole for will be going to the terrorists. Moving on to Fukushima news, this is out Zero Hedge. TEPCO releases typhoon water into ocean, says it was safe. The always truthful and ever trustworthy Tokyo Electric Power Company has released that says Typhoon Man Yi caused no major damage at Fukushima. That's great news, if true. But the follow-up to that is perhaps a little more concerning. As Kyoto News reports, TEPCO has released the excess rainwater that's collected between the barriers around radioactive storage tanks into the ocean. We're reassured, though, 
the cumulative rainwater was below allowable limits at 30 becquerels per litre, except the Tokyo Times reports that some was emitting 170,000 per litre. All good then. Because, you know, it's not like TEPCO admitted earlier this month that the radiation leak out of Fukushima was 18 times higher than they've been telling us for two and a half years. It's not as if their radiation detectors could only measure a maximum of 100 MSV per hour when the leaks were actually 1,800 MSV per hour. You know, I guess we're just going to have to trust them that the water they released into the Pacific Ocean after this typhoon like the 300 tons of radioactive water which they admitted to releasing recently, is perfectly safe. Final story tonight. Federal government routinely hires internet troll shills to monitor chat rooms, disrupt article comment sections. This is out of Natural News. And again, this is no longer a conspiracy theory. It's totally admitted. The NSA, the Pentagon, the CIA, the Israeli government, along with a host of major corporations, including Monsanto, are hiring individuals whose sole purpose is to troll the comment sections of news websites, including Infowars.com, in an attempt to sway public opinion. And as the AP reported last month, Israel is also hiring students straight out of university to go into social media networks and post pro-Israel messages. Of course, we also had the story out of CTV in Canada where government shills weighed into social media and comment sections to, quote, correct misinformation about political issues. So government shills being paid to troll social media and comment sections on news websites with status propaganda. It's now completely commonplace. I'm going to wonder every time I post online, is someone from the federal government watching what I'm saying? Right. Do I have to change the temper or the tone of my argument simply because I worry that I'm being watched? It is a little bit scary. We've been talking about this risk, uh, this online risk for so long. Now that the government is wading into it, I think it needs to be very conscious of, of the potential for those fears to come true. I've also seen a recent trend where these fake profiles of attractive women wearing anonymous masks on Facebook. They'll try to friend you. They'll try to get you to send them an email. And it sounds like a form of entrapment. We know that the DHS is monitoring social media closely, targeting people who use certain keywords. And these forums, again, they've been used for an entrapment many times in the past. So we've got trolls, uh, government shills wading into social media comments on websites. It's can be admitted, and it seems to be increasing in frequency. Uh, look out for a special report on the move towards a Chinese-style real name registration internet in America. That's coming up tomorrow. That's it for the news. Stay tuned, though, because Leanne McAdoo speaks to comedy troupe Joy Camp about how they're reaching out and waking up people via the medium of satire. This is InfoWars Nightly News. Stay tuned. InfoWarsStore.com, a conscious and involved distributor of independently made products that support a healthy and aware community. Dive into cleaner waters with your own ProPure system and Pro1D filter. Save 10% with the promo code WATER. We've handpicked a veritable treasure trove of the best non-GMO seed banks on the market. And our selection of films showcases a wealth of knowledge outdone only by our books. Check for combo packs to multiply your savings. Wear your colors proudly with one of these conversation starters. Now available in pink. Get prepared and fund the revolution at InfoWarsStore.com. Our guest today is Kevin Kostelnik of Joy Camp. You may remember Joy Camp's entry in our Operation Paul Revere film contest. Their YouTube channel pushes out a lot of pro-liberty-minded comedy, and so far it hasn't gotten them suicided or killed. <laughs> All right, well, welcome to the show, Kevin. 
Thank you for having me. So Joy Camp is really good at taking serious political issues and then twisting them into a warped pill that's a little bit easier to swallow. <laughs> yeah, that's sort of the aim that we do over here is we try to take the truth and make it funny so that um, people can digest it a little bit easier. What do you what do you say to people who think that comedy isn't the the proper medium for politics? Um, well, we say they're right. You know, there shouldn't be any room for humor in this world. It should be all serious all the time, nonstop. <laughs> no, seriously, though, um, we would say that, um, well, Benny and I, I'm sorry, Benny couldn't be here with me today. Um, he sends his hellos to all of you, but uh, we're big fans of Manly P. Hall, and Manly P. Hall has a great understanding of it. He says that there can be no great philosophy of life without a sense of humor, and there can be no sense of humor without a great philosophy of life. So that's sort of our take on it. And um, we also really like the Oscar Wilde quote, which is, if you're going to tell somebody the truth, you better make them laugh, otherwise they'll kill you. <laughs> so I would tell those people that in the interest of our lives, comedy is necessary. Well, especially after one of your latest videos, uh, I'm sure you're gonna get some death threats after your take on World War III. <laughs> Let's look at that video now. Assad also issued a stern warning about Western retaliation. Chaos and extremism will spread. The risk of a regional war exists. Welcome back to the World War III pregame show. Another showdown in the Middle East for America. This, of course, piggybacking on classic matchups with Iraq, Afghanistan, and most recently, Libya. The undefeated America is steamrolling its way to world domination, and the question is, will anyone be able to stop them? Will Syria represent the revival the Arabs have been looking for? Reverend G, what are your thoughts? Uh, well, first of all, praise the Lord, okay? Another war is on the horizon. I could not be more excited. Uh, let's take a look at America's track record. We've had to overcome a lot. Uh, we've got conspiracy theorists just popping up left and right, and of course terrorism. Terrorism. Yeah, we can't forget about terrorism. terrorism. Okay. Well, Threatening our freedom every single day. But the wild card here that nobody saw coming, and not a lot of people are talking talking about is Israel, their involvement in all of this. I mean, come on, guys. We all saw what happened in Palestine. But they're doing in Palestine. Oh, right? No, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, no. I mean, it's ruthless stuff going on over there, folks. You know, they're acting like beasts. They're beasts. All right? Now, with Israel's support from the sidelines, Syria's in some real hot water here. KK, how do you see this one playing out? Well, B-Man, I am glad you asked. You see, it can go down like this. If the U.S. goes on the offensive and attacks Syria, then Syria's only option will be to launch a Hail Mary downfield to Israel. But we all know that Israel has one of the best defenses in the world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Big Ben Netanyahu says he's prepared for any scenario. Israel will respond, and they will respond with strength. Ooh. Well, Kevin, you are really rooting for America, so you agree that we are exceptional. Absolutely. I think, actually, secretly, all of us in the video were rooting for America. I think that everybody is rooting for America, secretly. But, um, no, but seriously, we, um, we're not really rooting for World War III. <laughs> World War III, <laughs> yes. Hopefully people understand that that was a joke. Well, you'd be That's surprised. I know. We actually we do get surprised, to be honest, with how many people think that what we're doing is serious or that it's not a laughing matter. And um, I mean, for a moment of seriousness, we really do. We're, we're truth seekers at the end of the day. And we just love comedy. We love George Carlin. We love Bill Hicks. We love Dave Chappelle. We love these people that have figured out Russell Brand. He had a great interview um, with Alex Jones recently. And we just love the way that these people are able to convey the truth in a nice package for people that otherwise wouldn't really pay that much attention to it. Um, it's one thing to sort of preach to the choir, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, our videos give a sense of relief. We offer a sense of relief to people who are aware of these subjects, but to other people, like people of my family and people that we're friends with. This is a great way to uh, enlighten them about a subject uh, and make them laugh at the same time. Because we've realized that once you make somebody laugh, their guard is down. And at that point, you can pretty much plant the seed of truth. And then you just kind of let let the rest um, 
work itself out and and hopefully they'll that's they'll let that seed grow and nurture inside of them and and that's about as much as we can do masking truth and laughter is very very powerful thing definitely there's it gets really heavy sometimes in the new studio so sometimes it's nice to be able to lighten the mood Oh, I agree. Somebody wrote us recently on Facebook. They told us that they go to, you know, Infowars and Red Ice and um, all these other websites to get their information, to get the real information. And then they come over to 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 Joy Camp to get um, uh, a little sense of imbalance in their life. You know, they digest a lot of really intense information and they have to find some type of relief, some type of outlet. So at Joy Camp, that's really what we're, what we're offering. Um, beyond spreading the information to people who might not otherwise uh, be all about it, we also offer this sort of sense of relief and balance for people that, that are all about it. So how do you guys narrow down the conspiracies? There's so much material to work with. How do you pick the the conspiracy of the day. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, well, we have a whiteboard in our living room, where um, which is like our Joy Cam Studios, where we film almost everything here in Los Angeles. And um, anytime we come up with an idea, we usually jot it down. We're trying to be better about being more timely because we understand that people generally share things um, on their sites when it fits in the news cycle. But every now and then we just can't help ourselves when we come up with some ridiculously silly idea that we have to do. And the sort of like the bittersweet, fortunate and unfortunate thing about being in the realm of conspiracies is that there is an endless supply of them because there's always something in the news cycle every day that needs to be um, that attention. A flashlight needs to be shined on it. And sometimes it's just so ridiculous that honestly, I feel like our best sketches kind of write themselves. Um, so something pops up in the news cycle; it's unavoidable. We have to, we can't tackle everything, so we sort of pick and choose, and then it just it, it happens organically. We just sit down, start writing, and you know, a couple days later, we got a video. So it's not like Joy Camp takes on where you're <laughs> flying yourself with wine and. Some, sometimes it is, and Joy Camp takes on that we were uh, visiting Oakland for a couple of days. Um, this is one of our more recent videos as well. And that one, we spent, I think, three days trying to figure out what the heck we wanted to make a video about while we were house-sitting this really beautiful house in Oakland. And we just could not agree on anything until the end when Benny was like, well, why don't we just make that video? And if you <laughs> haven't seen it, you can see it on the channel. And I think we cover like 115 conspiracies in under five minutes in that video. Yeah, so. I was really impressed. I was like, oh my gosh, I need to start doing some stories on all. I was getting source material from you guys. <laughs> <laughs> oh, good. I'm glad it can be a point of reference. <laughs> well, so you actually tackle uh, something that's very newsworthy in your latest video, the iPhone 5 NSA, which is hilarious that people don't get it, that their biometric data is being stored in this phone, and it's cool, it's my thumbprint, and you guys really, really nailed it with that video. Yes, thank you. We That was our most recent, honestly, I was actually up till four in the morning finishing that video and just made it public, I think, uh, less than an hour ago. We got a, um, a phone call from Luke uh, Radowski at We Are Change, who I know is a friend of your guys'. Is. He's a friend of ours, too. We've been wanting to collaborate with him for a very long time. Um, he had the idea. He said, hey, the iPhone 5, Apple just made a big announcement. If we could do the iPhone 5 NSA, that would be awesome. He sent over uh, a few details for the script, and then Benny and I just pretty much ran with it. We filmed it, shot it. We pretty much wrote it, filmed it, shot it, edited it in a weekend, and we just publi- published it today. And it looks like it's doing well. So it's on our channel, um, youtube.com slash thejoycamp. It's also on We Are Change, YouTube dot com slash we are change luke's channel um and it looks like it's doing pretty well right now so well we actually have it queued up to play a clip of it on our channel right now iphone 5 nsa uses speech recognition technology so you don't have to bother yourself with remembering things or consulting your brain for any information ever again just ask it for the time the day of the week what your name is, sports scores, anything, really. You can ask it anything. It puts your brain in your hand and into our database. 
we've also developed what we like to call blackout technology, which allows authorities to block video and photos whenever they feel your security is in danger. For instance, if a political rally is ambushed by a conspiracy theorist demanding answers, the police can black out every phone in the crowd so his questions are never heard or seen by anyone. Reporters, do your job, please. Ask some questions. And once he's silenced and his coordinates are locked in, iPhone 5 NSA takes care of the rest. Just a question, man. How are we supposed to know the truth when we can't even ask a question? It was just a question. That's all it was. So, Kevin, what do you think about the fact that you can make these videos, you're kind of making fun of what's happening, but probably in about six months we're going to find out that it's actually true and they really are using our data like this? Well, that's why we made the video Suicide In, so that nobody would ever think that we would actually kill ourselves <laughs> um, like some of these people do. So um, we put that video out there. That's our statement, um, loud and clear. But uh, honestly, the process is cathartic for us, I think. We, um, we get so wrapped up in finding out the truth behind things uh, that it, it kind of builds up in us. And to be able to take it and turn it into something light, something that we can um, laugh about and uh, share with other people and, and hopefully get other people to laugh and, and think about it, too, um, the internet is so full of unprofessional um, fluff, just cotton candy. You know, you click on on something that's supposedly funny, and um, it comes and it goes. And so we're trying to ho hopefully offer something that's um, a little bit more intelligent, something that people can laugh at and think at the same time, because that's really what it's all about. So um, I didn't mean to diverge too far off your question there, but at the end of the day, we do what we do because we're truth seekers and because we love comedy. And the two of them together um, is just like a complete catharsis for us. We're able to vent, to let everything out, and to share that with with um, the community online. So it's it's um, been a blessing for us the last year and a half. Well, one of your YouTube viewers uh, asked a question on on your video, uh, Gary Dupree. He asks, "Is Joy Camp better than FEMA Camp? And if so, <laughs> how much do you guys charge for re-education?" <laughs> Uh, well, luckily, Gary, admission into Joy Camp is free of charge. <laughs> you don't have to be rich or famous to be a part of it, because we certainly aren't. Um, yeah, I would certainly hope that Joy Camp would be a little bit better than FEMA Camp. <laughs> Let's hope so anyway. I guess we'll see. <laughs> Do you guys have, you know, storable food and, and blankets and everything? Because that's... Man, That's we... going <laughs> to... We, we try to be cautious and prepared, but not to be overly cautious and overly prepared. <laughs> yeah, because um, it's good to be prepared, but to live in fear is, every day of your life is not something that we want to subscribe to. We, we much prefer uh, laughing versus um, being afraid of the world that we, <laughs> that we live in. <laughs> Hopefully that's self-explanatory in our videos. <laughs> well, then FEMA camp wins. FEMA camp definitely wins. At the end of the day, Joy Camp stands. In fact, I think what we're going to do is switch over to Boy Camp pretty soon. Nice. So um, you can forget about <laughs> FEMA camp. You forget about Joy Camp. Just go with Boy Camp. Lots of – is that like the uh... – That's an all-boys camp. No, no girls allowed in that camp. <laughs> so I'm sorry, but no boys allowed. I mean, no girls allowed, only boys. See, now I'm confusing myself. We're it sounds change. like Bohemian, the Bohemian Grove. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I, I was this close to putting the logo at the end of that video, Boy Camp, but I felt like the, uh, the joke in that video sort of explains itself. Bohemian Grove, all men only. I mean, how can you not make a joke about that? Actually, okay, to be fair, though, researching that one, doing that one, watching all of the Alex Jones stuff, that one was one of the... The um, the most like w when we do these projects, we research a lot, obviously, and because we don't want to come off as stupid in the videos. <laughs> so we research a whole a lot in these videos and it doesn't hit me until a few days later 
what we've actually researched because I'm thinking of it in terms of how am I going to film it, how am I going to edit it, how am I going to cut it and get it out there. And so it's not till a couple days later when the video is online and I'm watching it that I'm like, wow, like all that information I download and process just hit me. So with Bohemian Grove, I kind of I had nightmares, I think, for a couple of days because that is some dark, dark, dark stuff that potentially happens behind those closed doors and has happened behind there. Yeah, uh, the guy the guy was talking about barbecuing babies. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> that video. We, we saw that clip and we just I mean, we we couldn't avoid using that clip. But if if that is true or if there is truth behind um, some of the claims here and certainly uh, Alex's video of, of him being inside there really sheds a lot of light on it. It's a very dark and scary thing um, to think about. And hopefully the, the a little bit of lightness that we brought to it um, will help people be able to research that uh, a little bit easier because it, it was hard for me to, to dive in and research that one. Um, but we did it. We got it out there. It's a good laugh. Uh, hopefully, <laughs> and um, hopefully it'll help spread a little bit of awareness of a, a very um, dark, dark subject. Well, one of your videos talks about uh, the internet kill switch, which <laughs> is a big topic kind of going on in the in the news. Um, the former NSA director Michael Hayden indicated that he'd like to see the U.S. adopt a a style of web policing that that communist China uses. China. Yep. And uh, bloggers there are being forced to confess their crimes against the government on oh, yeah. live television. Oh, my goodness. So beautiful. You guys would have so much to apologize for. So is there <laughs> is there anything you'd like to confess right now? We, we would be hung from the highest tree, I think, <laughs> if that was the case. <laughs> um, you know, Screw them. I don't know. You know, we at this point, we just we're going to keep on doing what we're doing, regardless of, of what happens. We do fear we have seen YouTube channels be taken down. Um, and we have a little clip of that at the end of our suicided video. So there is some fear in us that, um, you know, they could just shut it down. And that is in part why we made that that Internet um, kill switch video. Uh, is to show the funny side of what life is like without the internet. But obviously, we wouldn't be connecting without the internet. So it is very pow powerful. And I feel like all of my friends online at this point are are pretty much um, truth seekers. And I wouldn't have that connection without it. Because Benny and I here in Los Angeles, we get people that come and visit us and hang out with us now because of Joy Camp. It's great. They find us. They like us. They send us a message. We communicate. And then eventually, we have them over. We meet up with them. And the number one thing that we get from these visitors, these these you know these truth seekers like all of us in your audience here watching, is that they feel alone. They really feel alone. They have no one to talk to, or their family thinks they're crazy. Their dad yells at them. Whatever it is, it's it's a common thread that we've been finding with with these people. Um, but most people are innately good, and they want to know the truth deep down inside of them. So it's like it's weird, man. All these people, they have all the parts inside of them. But the conditioning of the society has steered them in one way their entire lives that they don't know how to connect with people um, who are thinkers. And so once you get those people in a room together, they just vent and they let it all out. We get these, these truthers into our apartment and it's like they finally met somebody that they can talk to and they just let everything out uh, that they've had built up inside of them forever that they haven't been able to talk to other people about. So... Um, we're finding that this, uh, going back to the internet, connecting with people, connecting with your neighbors. We live in a, a, a nine unit complex and we're friends with everyone in this complex. And they all know what we do and they're not all necessarily truth seekers, but um, they can laugh at what we do and they can communicate with us. So communication is absolutely essential. The information is out there. Sources like InfoWars and other people are putting it out there, but communicating that information to people, to the mass audience, is really what we think is crucial at this stage. Getting the information um, out there to people who hadn't, who wouldn't otherwise look for it before. Letting people know that it's cool to to be smart, you know, that, and to question that it's cool what's going to, on, and to question <laughs> things. Yes, that it's it's hip or it's trendy or whatever it takes to get people to stop that mentality of you're just a conspiracy theorist and start thinking like, oh, wow, this guy actually knows what he's talking about. And I can see that his life is better 
for what he has been researching and what he knows, and maybe my life can be better. So maybe I can talk to him more. Maybe I can reach out to my neighbor more. Maybe I can talk to people in the streets more about this kind of stuff and really just find that human connection. That's, in my eyes, that's what is not to give this long, drawn-out answer to your question, but in my eyes, the biggest thing is is that people need to just connect with other people, to just let down their barriers and realize that we're all in this thing together. There is a small, powerful elite of pathetic, white, old, you know, <laughs> cring- cringy, creepy men that outside of their suits, outside of the uniforms, outside of the security are just nothing. They are absolutely pathetic nothings. So once we can all connect and realize that they're manipulating us and that we're all in the same boat, there's no Democrat, there's no Republican, there's no left, there's no right. We're all in this thing together. Together. Communicate and do good in all that you do. It's really as simple (laughs) as that. Communicate with people and do right and your life will take you exactly where it needs to take you. Well, and the, your Internet Kill Switch video showed that it's really not going to be that bad if Obama does flip that switch because we'll get out there and, and enjoy our life again rather than being sucked into electronics. So exactly. What do you have coming up? What's next for Joy Camp? We have, um, well, we have one other video that's uh, already filmed and already mostly edited, and um, I'm sure that the audience here is probably all big fans of the cult classic John Carpenter's They Live. Um, We are, too. And there's a very infamous fight scene in They Live um, between uh, the, the two main characters of the film, And um, the fight scene is something that we basically replicated. We did our own Joy Camp version of it um, to show the metaphor. Somebody wrote us a message, in in short, somebody wrote us a message. They said, can you guys make a video about what it's like to wake up the unwakeable? (laughs) So we created this fight scene from They Live. Recreated, I should say. And that should be out um, in the next week or two, uh, ideally. And it's very funny. And I think the that your uh, audience here will get a good kick out of it. <laughs> well, I cannot wait to get that email because, yes, I am subscribed to your channel. Awesome. <laughs> well, Kevin, thank <laughs> you so much for being a part of Joy Camp, an amazing pro-liberty comedy troupe. We appreciate what you're doing here at InfoWars. Thank you very much. We are happy to come on anytime. And next time, I'll make sure that Benny is with me and not just my little (laughs) self-portrait behind me, keeping me company here. (laughs) That's an amazing self-portrait, by the way. Or or the one in the Speedo up there. Yes. (laughs) Boy, how narcissistic does that look? Look, I got two of me right between me. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you so much. Thank you. (laughs) Bye, guys. That was Kevin Kostelnik of Joy Camp. And you can actually donate to their cause on their YouTube channel. I think Kevin said they are working with tens of dollars to make all those videos. uh, His mom actually bought their green screen fabric for them at Joanne Fabrics. Thanks, Mom. (laughs) So while you are supporting Liberty Minded Media, become a member of Prison Planet TV. Your subscription will get you access to the Alex Jones show, the special reports, the movies, all of our rants and ebooks. And of course, your subscription will allow you to share your membership with up to 10 other people signed on at the same time. That's it for tonight's news. Join us again here tomorrow night at 7. I'm Leanne McAdoo. Now you can watch Alex Jones live at InfoWars.com forward slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. You can also browse the network, the InfoWars Nightly News. And over 60 movies and documentaries all together in one place. You can watch the Alex Jones radio show live as it happened. So check it out, InfoWars.com forward slash show.